we're doing. Hello, everybody. Welcome back once again. Thank you so much for joining us today. Once again, I've, I've been blessed and probably getting a little spoiled to having some really good guests on here lately. And so I'm going to continue that today. I have with me Sean Duffy. And if you have not heard on Duffy before, you need to start doing a little research because he is literally everywhere. I've tried to kind of write myself some notes of of different things he's associated with just so we can kind of talk of them and, and there's a lot there. So before we get into that, hello, Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Looking forward to, to this. You know, you are a lot of the things you're associated with even has it in the title, you know, culture. And I've got it in my title of, of kind of what I use and, and it's huge to me and I'm excited to talk to anybody that, that really digs and, and loves to talk about it as well. So super excited. Glad to go yep. on. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, man. Uh, when you reached out to yeah. me and you, you gave the invite, I couldn't think of uh, anybody better. You know, it's, it's always good to sit and have that conversation with people who are on the same path as you, who share the same values. And, um, you know, those, those to me are the, the conversations that we need to cherish because, um, oh, yeah. for whatever, for whatever reason, you know, they just, they're just not happening in the firehouse, you know, which is, it kind of makes me sad really, you know? Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, th I think, I think a lot of it is, you know, you, you're going to have different personalities and different drives and different passion with the, the people you work with. And so if you are with a crew or even a department that isn't really on your you know, like mindedness, if that's even a term, it's, it's good to reach out and, and really kind of see what else is out there. And man, I have, I have been completely surprised and you are absolutely one of the, who I'm talking about of all these people that they kind of tell their story and it's literally like they changed the name of the person talking and, and are telling my story. You know, the, the frustration of, of wanting to do something good, wanting to, to be a part of something bigger than themselves and not having that outlet where they're at. So they start going out and <clears throat> trying to find other platforms and, and you just hear it over and over again. And I, like I told you before I started recording, I listened to your uh, webinar with the Unlock Your Culture or so webcast, web webinar, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you, you explained that exact same thing, you know, in your introduction. Is that, is that about, you know, basically summing it up really quickly with how you got here? Yeah. Um, so first, I just want to kind of point on something, you know, I, I listened to what you and, and Corley Moore were talking about the other night and, you know, you and I are kind of on the same path, uh, believe it or not. So I also was not always the way I am today. Right. And, and I'm not ashamed to say that um, there was a time in my fire service career where I was perfectly okay. You know, I can, I can remember quite clearly just walking in the firehouse, punching in and going to bed you know, and, and the tones would go off. I'd go to the truck, I'd run the call, I'd come back and I'd do the same thing, you know, and it just comes a point in your career where you realize that one, that's, that's probably not the safest way to be, you know, that's a recipe for disaster, but two, um, you're, all, you're, you're really robbing the citizens at that point because yep. they expect you to show up prepared and, and, and you're not. So where, where that kind of all changed for me is, is having a, a near miss, honestly. Um, that was my gut check to, to, to realize like, I'm not as good as I need to be or, and I'm nowhere as yeah. good as I thought I was. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of sparked my passion. And, and with that, you know, you want that drive to always do more, to always be better than what you were before. And, and that kind of sprung where I am today. And with, uh, with the build your culture stuff, man, it's, no, no department's perfect, right? Every, every department has their issues, but when you find yourself in a spot where it seems like you're, you're one of the only few people around that actually care and they want more out of the fire service and, and you want to make that, that cultural shift or, or whatever, um, it, it's, it's very frustrating because you, you get a lot of, you know, beat back from it. And 
you know, it's just good to, to be with my buddy Pablo Jenner and, and just talk. And, and we realize like, hey, you know, if we can sit here and talk about it or we can actually do something about it. So we decided that it was time to do something about it. And, you know, it's it just kind of all history from there. Yeah, that's, you know, like I said, it just it's funny how maybe some small details change, but the same story is just told over and over and over again. And another another person that fits into that that I've heard that I really respect that has some ties to you is Mark alone. You know, I've, I've heard him say a lot of the same stuff and yeah, that's, that's good. You know, whatever, whatever it takes to, you know, if it's a close call, like you said, if it's a frustration that you're, you're wanting to start something that, that you just can't get the, the push to, to help get going, you know, whatever it is, whatever it takes to get you to the point of, okay, I'm ready to do better. I'm ready to get better every day, to grow a little bit, to learn something, you know, even if it's just may have already known, but you haven't done in a while, you know, whatever it is, just getting out and making yourself and making your crew just a little bit better than last shift. I mean, that, that's, it's, it's important to me to, to find whatever that is for you. And so I, I love reaching out and, and learning other people's stories and, and meeting other people. And so it's, it's been a, an exciting journey for me just, just getting out. So I've, again, I, I really appreciate you and, and everybody else I've had on to kind of tell their story. And so going with that, I kind of jumped into all this and didn't even really give you a chance to, uh, <laughs> Give your give yourself a little bio. So I've got to hog the microphone here. You tell tell everybody right. a little bit about your yourself and your career. All right. So for you uh, who don't know, again, my name is Sean Duffy. Um, been in the fire service 15 years now. Started as a volunteer firefighter in 2004, and uh, just fell in love with it. You know, I <laughs> it's kind of funny because when when you're doing something for free. I think that's really where you find your true passion. And for me, I, I would much rather be at that firehouse for free than I wanted to go swing a hammer, you know, on the construction site. So I, I knew right then and there early on that, you know, this was probably the career path for me. So I, I just stuck with it. And, um, you know, here I am 15 years later, I've worked for, uh, I currently work for the city of Venice here in Southwest Florida, but, um, this journey has been incredible, man. It's, it's taken me through county fire departments, uh, city fire departments. I made a move across the state, worked in Michigan for a few years. Um, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know, you meet some amazing people along the way and, and you get to do some amazing things. Um, and, you know, we really kind of take what we have this opportunity for granted sometimes. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of, of education and, and furthering, you know, your skills and abilities. So although I uh, never envisioned myself becoming a paramedic while I was up in Michigan, I, I went and obtained that paramedic license. So I've been doing that side of the job as well for about six years now. So, um, you know, things are going well. I have no complaints, um, you know, and uh, started teaching. And, and just kind of putting my views and, and things out there and things that I've learned through trial and error. And, you know, that, that's really my, my favorite part of the job it, is that aspect of it, you know, is getting to meet people like yourself or other people around the country and, and just sit and have these great conversations, share uh, experiences, you know, Hey, what works for you? What works for me type deal. And uh, you know, we're, we're really fortunate to have that. So, uh, that that kind of brings me into the build your culture, you know. Uh, after going through these fire conferences and everything, and, and sitting with people and and just talking and and getting to meet people from all walks of life and all kinds of fire service cultures, it was time. Pablo and I sat and we decided, you know, that's what it's about. You know, it's about building your culture. So we kind of coined that phrase, and uh, in 2019 we started up and. You know, no, nobody has all the answers, right? But, you know, one thing that I, I consistently say is that uh, we're better together, right? 
we're having this conversation. Your your listeners listen to to your podcast. You know, other people they they subscribe to Facebook pages, whatever it is, because they want that information. Um, so, you know that that was really the the driving factor for us. You know, to go that route and and start teaching more and sharing more of our passion in that realm of things was that look, not one person can do it alone. So if if we are after that building your culture, so to speak, then this is going to take an army. And I think we're on the right path with that. So uh, I, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't mean to ramble or anything like that, but no, go ahead. just kind of just bring it all in there for you, for everybody. So they yeah. can kind of understand why this came about, you know, and, and yeah. that, um, I didn't just come out of the fire Academy yesterday and decide, Hey, I want to jump on this bandwagon of, of culture stuff. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I went, I went through some, some rough times in the fire service and, and I worked for some less than ideal fire departments. And, uh, you know, each one of those has their own unique challenges and their own unique culture and, and you can learn from all of it. Uh, so it's, yeah. you know, when you reach out for help, you want to make sure that the people one that you're talking to to try and get advice can relate uh, to your situation. And and when you're the one giving yeah. that advice, you want you want to make sure that it's good advice and you're not just kind of leading people down a path that uh, they they may not benefit from. Yeah, I you you mentioned earlier, and you know I I kind of admitted, like you said, on Corley's. Uh, podcast of, of not being somebody that's always been fired up, you know, and, and I'm, I'm, I appreciate you kind of saying the same thing about yourself. I think, I think it is so important for people like us that are trying to be a voice and trying to spread and share a message to be real like that, to be honest like that. Because if you, if you don't share those negative times of your career and, or the, you know, the, the not so Instagram and Facebook worthy times of your career, well, then you're almost putting yourself up on a pedestal to where others, others can't feel as connected to what you're trying to share, I think. And, you know, you, you share those downtimes, you share those mistakes and, and mess ups. And that starts opening doors of saying, Hey, listen to this or saw you here or there and, and heard your story. And, and I, I really appreciate hearing that because you know, that's where I'm at right now. And, and it was just good to hear somebody else experiencing the same thing. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah, I absolutely. think that that is very powerful. And I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of that. You, know, you see a lot of the people pushing to, you know, we're doing this and, and this is the, the way to do it and all that. But, and you, you got to be real too. Yeah, you, you do. You got to be real. You got to humble yourself, you know, and one of the things that I love to do is challenge myself in front of everybody else, knowing that I'm probably going to fail. Right. And, and that, yes. that's scary, right? That, that, is, that is scary. And, you know, like you said, what, what we tend to do when we put on Facebook or all these other social media platforms is our success. Right. And I, I love sharing a, um, a video or a story about, you know, a time that maybe I wasn't successful, you know, I'll, I'll tell you a story, you know, about a few shifts back and I don't mind sharing it because it's just the truth. It's what really happened. You know, I'm, I decided I was going to try and practice throwing ladders for the day. That was going to be my skill that I focus on for the day. And it, it's hot, you know, and, you know, we just got these leather bands inside of our helmets and uh, for all up until recently I've had cloth so I never had an issue with it sliding around on my head or any of that stuff right so I got a little complacent right I put the helmet on I didn't tighten it up the way I should have and guess who's watching all of my crew <laughs> right they're down there they're they're hanging out and they're watching and what happens the minute I look up to extend that uh fly section my helmet falls off what are you gonna do I just laughed about it I was just like hey you know I've preached wear your gear, right. You know, do this thing like so much. Yeah. And here I am, my, my lid's falling off. Right. Yeah. And, and that's just a, that's a moment where you got to own it. And you're like, Hey man, you know, I just, that's it. I'm sorry. Yeah. But the reason I say something like that is because, um, you know, when it comes to instructors or people teaching, one, one of my biggest pet peeves is, 
those people who aren't real and they don't expose themselves and their weaknesses and, and they're not in it together, you know? And, and I think yeah. that's where we fail in the fire academies too, is do this because I said so. Well, hey, if you want buy-in with anything you do, you have to be that example. So be the example. And, and one of the ways to do that is get down there and, and do those, those things with everybody. And uh, when I teach search, I'll pick the biggest guy in that class and I'll say, I, I'm going to try and lift you by myself out this window. And I, I may not be successful, you know, and, yeah. and that's it. But you use those opportunities to figure out where your weaknesses are and you build upon it. And what happens is you'll have the students in there and you'll be like, hey, listen, okay, so this guy is obviously too much for me. You call for help. You need this, whatever the, the situation is. Let's get, let's get our hands on this. Let's use our, yeah. our leverage here. And, and you wind up becoming together as a team. Like you're still the instructor and everything else, but next thing you know, like everybody's throwing their two cents in there and you're figuring out this problem together. And I think that's, that's really why I like the failure side of this more than the success, because yeah. it, you're going to have to fail to, to figure out what works and what doesn't. I mean, that's just part of the process. And, and if you can't accept that, and you're ashamed of that, then, you know, I, I think we have a bigger issue. And that's, that's where we hit all those walls, in my opinion, in the fire services. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you might come in, you might come in and say, Hey guys, I want to try this. And, and maybe your training chief or whoever goes, no, that's not the way we do things around here. Well, when you ask why, you know, why can't we, we try and experiment? or you get told, no, that's not efficient, or somebody challenges you and, and your next rebuttal to that is, um, well, let's go down and figure this out together and they don't want to do that. That's my question of why, you know, yeah. if, if we're trying to get better together, then we need to be together, you know? Again, I got off on a, on a tangent there, but no, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's really it, man. Like yeah. we've got to humble ourselves and realize that we are at the end of the day, we're, we're going to chase perfection. It doesn't exist, but if yep. we can relentlessly pursue it and we can do that together, then we'll fall somewhere in that uh, realm of excellence. And uh, that's, that's what we have to strive for. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit before we recorded about how I, I don't really, most of these episodes, I don't really have a, a plan. You know, it, there might be a topic that I want to address, but it, I just like, letting it go where it goes and and what you just said right there is exactly why and because i think that is a great great topic to address is and kind of expounding on what you what you said and the the culture just in my department is that station officers you know we we don't we don't move the hose around on scene no we we aren't involved in in flowing water or things like that so when it's time to train it's the firefighters that do that because that's what they do well, okay i get that but i i've had a kind of an awakening here probably in the past eight months or so uh, that i want to be doing that yeah i will never do that on scene at, at the, my pay department you know i i'm a volunteer as well so hopefully i'll have that chance there but that that's a great opportunity one that just like we talked about it helps the other firefighters feel comfortable doing it because if they see me messing up if they see that i'm okay with getting out there way out on the limb that i'm probably should be on and, and putting myself out there it makes them comfortable being out there as well but but two and maybe even bigger i learn to the point that I can teach others because if I don't get out there and do it, I can't teach the next new firefighter that comes on because I'm, I'm not competent in it. And so I think that's, that's, that's really an area that I would like to kind of start shifting a little bit of culture in my particular part, getting the officers out there and getting involved in that stuff. You know, you're not above that. You're not, I'm sorry. And so yeah, yeah, there's right. so many good things to get out of that. And is that, do you kind of see that same thing in your department or how, how do you feel about that kind of idea? Well, uh, I mean, right now I'm blessed. Um, 
the department I work for now, like I, I got a great crew. I got an awesome battalion chief and, and we're very training heavy. I mean, we'll pull out the engine every shift and, and we'll go over, you know, pump training and, and whatever. And everybody has a, has a say, right. Um, yeah. You know, what, not too long ago, we had a structure fire and, and um, you know, two man engine, right. My partner, and I come back and we're whooped. We just were on this fire for the past couple hours and we show up and guess what? We're, we're doing bunker gear drills for time. And I'll be honest with you, that's the last thing I wanted to do coming back from the structure <laughs> fire was, yeah. you know, I, I haven't eaten yet. We were in the middle of training on, on the ladder, uh, right as that fire came out. So it was just this constant thing. Before I got to eat was like five o'clock at night and I was whooped. But you know what that turned into? That turned into us coming back from that fire, doing bunker gear drills for time, make sure everybody was, was able to do it in, in less than a minute and a half. And then turn into some search drills right? So, um, hey, this is the best way to, to drag a victim out. And, and I bring all that up to say that it took me a long time to find a crew and find a, a department that, that really put the emphasis on that stuff. All right. Yeah. Prior to all that, man, it was a struggle. I'll be honest with you. You know, I, I had station officers who, who really didn't advance their knowledge. Um, you know, they were, they were perfectly okay like, with where they were. You'd be on a fire scene. You'd say, "Hey, we need to put water on on this smoke. It's too hot." You know, whatever. They laugh at you, and you know, you go through all that stuff. But one of the things that drove me crazy, um, to answer your question, was, and I won't I won't say the name of the department. Anybody who knows me knows who who I'm talking about. Um, the way it was there was you were on an ambulance for a while, you know, until you promoted to a driver engineer. But here's the problem. You literally had guys that would go from being a fire medic on an ambulance, maybe been to a handful of fires. Um, now they're a driver engineer. They could be an engineer for about three years. Uh, and then they promote to a captain. So by the time they get to the captain level and they're in charge of training crews and, and getting new hires assigned to their station, what one, what is their level of experience? Generally not a whole lot, right? Yeah. Two, what is their level of knowledge? Well, they're not out there, you know, going to conferences or taking these classes or whatever, then, then they don't, they have a basic skill set, right? And why I think that's, excuse me, why I think that's bad is, like you said, you, you don't move hose on a fire ground, but it's still important for you, right? And it should be because you have a job to make sure that although you don't touch fire hose, the guy that's coming in who might be his first week or so he has to touch fire hose and he's looking to you to make sure like, Hey, my captain should have the answers that I'm looking for. Yeah. So when you put yourself in that position and, and you're like, well, that's not my job anymore. I don't do that or, or whatever, or you're in a leadership role and, and you don't really have experience when you're trying to teach that it's not going to end well, you know, and, and the end result is complacency and mediocrity. And that's, that's what I think like guys like you and, and me and anybody else who's on this fight to, to take our fire service back. That's what we're trying to avoid. And, you know, the, the only way to avoid that is, is doing exactly what you're doing, getting your hands on it, stretching line, flowing water, doing all that stuff because that one creates unit cohesion and two, yep. and make sure that you're still, you're still sharp because, you know, you never know when you're going to have to step in. And, yeah. and do those things. So uh, to answer your question, yes, I've had, I have struggled with those um, similar instances, but um, I, I really can't complain where I'm at now. I, I think, I think uh, they're doing good things in my department and they got the right vision. So, yeah. yeah you, you said something earlier, you know, challenge yourself in front of people. I think man, I, that's a, that's a good statement to, to keep in mind, you know, it, because that, it takes a lot of guts to do that. You know, it, yeah, I don't care what level you are. I don't care what, you know, what time you have on. I don't, I don't care what experience you have on it. to challenge yourself in front of others. It's tough. And it, it takes some guts to get out there and do it. And so, yeah, I, I think that's a great state for sure. Yeah. You know, it's, so uh, go ahead. No, no, you're good. Good. Jeremy. Uh, something that I 
that I heard you mention in the the uh, Unlock Your Culture webinar this morning, and I, I listened to it on my way home, is basically, and I'm kind of paraphrasing because I'm just trying to remember because I was driving, but it, you said to the effect of you don't want to change the culture just because you don't like it. You know, you it needs to be a culture change because it's the right thing to do. And I, I'd like to talk about that for a little bit. I, I think that I don't know if I've ever really put words to that, but I completely agree with it. You know, it's, it's not, this isn't me changing things because, oh, that irritates me. So that is going to be one of the first things I change to create the culture I want. It's that is not the right thing to be doing. We need to be doing something different or better. And it is, kind of go into that a little bit with, with your thinking on that. All right. So my thinking on that is, you know, we're, we're all going to have to do things we don't like period. You know, um, that, that's just the way of life. So when we're looking at where, what needs to be changed or enhanced, it, it's really an evaluation, right? So we'll take the example of nozzles. People like smooth bore, people like, uh, combination nozzles you know that that debate's gonna be here forever so if yep. you're just walking in and you're in a position where you're like well I personally like smoothbore nozzles so we're gonna go to all smoothbore and that's the culture you want ask yourself why what is the reasoning for that right because when it comes to nozzles and, and stuff like that uh, if to me if you train on what you have and you understand proper nozzle technique and water application and things like that then it's really the nozzle man that makes a difference, not the nozzle. Yeah. And, and I use that to tie that into our culture and our changes is, look, you can be a chief, you can be a captain, you can be whatever. When you're looking at culture, you have to ask, what's the reason? Why are we changing these things or why are we enhancing? Right. And like I touched on um, last night, you, lo or you look at it like this. When you change something, it's implying what? It doesn't work. It no longer works, right? Um, when you're enhancing something, you're saying, hey, this works really well. It's gotten us this far, but it could be better, and I want to make it better. And to me, those are the two questions you have to ask. Um, understand that culture is also what happens when nobody, well, excuse me, when nobody pays attention, right? So if you've done your evaluation and you've said, hey, you know, this particular thing, I, I don't like it. You know, I don't like the culture in my department of, hey, I went through fire academy, so, you know, that's good enough. I'm a firefighter. That's something that you could probably change for the better. But if you're like, hey, the culture in my fire department is to wear black socks, and I hate black socks, and you want to just change it, is that really a change that's necessary? Does that impact your vision? Does that impact your behavior? Does it impact your ability to perform, right? And when it comes to culture, you know, it's gonna bring you great employees, but it's also gonna cost you them, right? So that's where you need to choose. Is this decision that I'm making to change something? Is this something that is going to benefit the vision of this organization? Or is this something that's going to greatly cost? Right. So um, I'll look at it this way. My buddy Pablo had Central Florida Fire Tactics. Right. He he put that into play long before him and I even worked together. And and that page alone brought people to a certain organization. But once people got there, they realized that the culture of that organization didn't match what Pablo had. And that wasn't Pablo's fault. That was a leadership issue. Yeah. They didn't want to make the changes that would bring them the people because in their mind, what they had was good enough. They developed this organization that brought the people to them that performed in the way that they absolutely wanted. So when you're choosing what to change and what not to change, you really got to put your personal opinions aside, right? Yeah. And you got to say like, what is beneficial for everybody? What's going to make us safer? What's going to make our performance better? What's going to make our morale better, right? Um, because we're all going to leave, right, at some point. So the changes that you make should be with a lasting plan that this is going to be sustainable at the end of it. Um, and, and I think 
often we allow our emotions to take over and we just make those changes that aren't necessarily needed. And then you just create a lot of confusion because things change so often that you're never really enhancing anything. You're just like, hey, read this memo. By the way, we're doing this different now. Well, why? Well, just because of the way I like it. Well, okay, well, I just learned how to do this thing and now I got to relearn, you know, and yeah, you know, over time, like, I, I just think that's, that's something that um, we, we do ourselves a disservice on, you know, and, and the intentions may start off good, but um, I don't think the plan was well thought out when we're just walking in and dropping a bomb and going, all right, starting over, we're doing this, this, and this now. You know, you, you got to realize that people need time to process things and you need to allow a certain amount of time for the changes that have taken place to be implemented and everybody be on the same page. Yeah, I think just speaking personally, and I've, I've talked on it several different places and, and all that, but one of the things that builds up resentment and frustration in me the quickest is to get set handed something and, and not given a good reason why you know, we're going that direction or, or whatever it is, you know, that why attached to it is so important. And, you know, honestly, it, it doesn't matter what the change or, or, or what the policy or whatever it is that, that we're talking about. It doesn't matter what that is. My attitude and what I say and how I deal with it is not going to change that. It's coming. But to be able to just to, to hear, okay, this is why we're doing it. You know, this is the process, whatever that the, the whole story is to be able to say, you know, okay, I, I don't agree with it, but I get it. Okay. You know, just that, just hearing that there is an actual reason and that I don't have to understand or agree with it, but it's a legitimate reason why we're doing it. Oh, okay. Well then, then let's do it. You know what I mean? It, it, it changes storyline so much and, and it, it's so big just to, to understand that. And, and another piece of that is to, is to be a genuine why, you know, another thing that fires me up really quickly is to get told something and you're like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. That sounds like some <laughs> yeah. BS that you just made. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. I, I think that's, that is, that is big, big, big for us that are in the middle of, you know, you have people above you that are pushing things down and you're responsible for pushing that to, you know, your crew members. And so I, I do have a problem in that area for sure. I have to work through sometimes. So it's it's interesting that you say that, that because there's there's two things about culture and change that we either implement or you know whether it be by design or by default, right? Um, we have to understand that culture becomes our identity. That, that's ultimately the end result, right? So it, it's either going to be deeply rooted or it's going to be shallow, you know. And and I always use the analogy of like a tree. If you look at a tree, a tree has roots. Well. You know, what is a tree without roots? It's just a piece of wood, right? And where I'm going with that is every fire department has a mission statement. They have their vision, right? And if you ever want to know, like if you're lost and you're like, what, what is our department's culture? Where are we going? Well, then you should look at that, that vision because it's defined for you right there. That's the kind of people you want to hire. That's the, the kind of changes you want to make is all towards that vision. So, um, you know, if, if your vision is to say like, uh, I don't know, we, we want to be the premier, you know, the greatest, like whatever, if that's your vision, then you've got to constantly work towards that. And you've got to make the changes to implement what that means. Right. Um, so I have a thing here. Oh, it's a slide. There's, there's four things that uh, I, I personally believe when we're talking about cultural shift or cultural change that we need to understand. One it needs to be self-sustaining. Two, it's got to be planned carefully. Three, we have to develop it with purpose. And then four is implement it intentionally. 
right? And when we do all those things, then I think we've allowed ourselves to evaluate if this is needed or if it's not. Because at the end of the day, I don't believe that anybody has the idea of, um, you know, their vision statement be like, hey, we strive to, to provide poor customer service, right? Nobody's vision statement's that. But because culture is what happens when no one pays attention, or maybe you're implementing things that don't need to be implemented, or you have this certain amount of change capacity, uh, which I'll touch on in a minute, you're, you're kind of missing, you're just hitting reset all the time. You know, it's, it's like you have a problem with your computer, it freezes. And you're like, ah, what's going on? How many people just hit that power button or that reset button and reboot it, right? It's like, hey, let it catch up, right? Let it do its thing. It's processing, let it figure it out. Stop with the knee-jerk reaction. And what I mean by change capacity is every single individual has a, a certain level of, in their mind of what they're able to process. The more that you give them to process, the less likely they are able to perform it. So it's like, um, it's like a circuit. What happens when you overload a circuit? It blows, right? And that's what, that's what we're doing to our people when we're constantly changing things and just throwing at them. That's where the, the change capacity comes in. They're trying to process it, but you fill their mind with so many different changes in, in a relatively short amount of time that they don't know which way to go anymore. You know, they're like, well, it's, it's very overwhelming. And then what do we do? We fault them for it. Well, you're not meeting expectations. This is your fault. Well, we've never really given them the chance to meet the first expectation we wanted before we decided, I don't like that. I'm changing it. And, and yeah. I think that's where it comes in with the whole, be careful what you're changing. Um, you know, and, and like, again, I don't think any of it's malicious. I just think that us as a fire service, we're very impatient, you know, and, and we need to start oh, yeah. evaluating things and understanding that when we, when we make certain changes or adjustments, it's going to take a little bit to see the impact of that. So be patient, yeah. you know, um, you might be, you might get promoted tomorrow, battalion chief, whatever. Understand that that chief before you put in a lot of things into play, things that you may like, things that you may not like but it took him time. Yep. So you got to evaluate those and say, okay, why did he do this? What was his vision? Does that vision align with reality? Right. And if it doesn't, then that's the perfect chance for you to be like, Hey, his vision for this doesn't align with our core values. It doesn't align with reality and it doesn't align with my performance standard at all. Um, I have to reevaluate this and, and make the change necessary to where I can meet all of those things. Yeah, that's there's a, there's a lot of good stuff. I mean, just it's just funny because as we talk, it's like, and you you probably have four or five or even more topics that you could just create whole episodes just by themselves, and and it's it's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think, there's, you said something just a little bit ago that that made me want to dig in further, and I'm. I've lost my train of thought here, but I, yeah, I love, I love every bit of that. That's, that's good. Good stuff. You're so, so tell me again, you said you off your slide, you, the four keys of kind of what, what would you describe those as? Uh, so the first floor, uh, four, I actually have it up here, uh, is it's gotta be self-sustaining, right? Yeah. So what I mean by that is when, when you implement something, if you're not there or I'm not there or somebody else isn't there, is it going to be carried through? Is it going to be something that's able to continue to go long after we're gone? If it's not self-sustaining, then, then is it worth implementing, right? We tend to fight for a lot of things, right? And, and I often ask people like, okay, so what is your intention? If you're not going to do anything with it, then it's not worth fighting for, right? So when we choose to do something, we have to make sure that that fight isn't wasted energy, isn't a wasted breath, that it's truly what's needed to sustain, you know, our department or our people in the long run. Um, 
So that's where planning comes in. When you sit there and you plan it, you, that's the process, right? This is where I am. This is where I want to be. This, you know, every day you should be inching closer and closer, you know, you just be a little bit better today than you were yesterday or get a little bit closer to that goal today than you were yesterday um, and plan that. And, and, and that's going to take some time. And, and that's where we have to be patient and not rush things because we want to see it right now. Uh, one of the other things I talked about was how culture will eat strategy for breakfast. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can have the best plan. If you don't have the people, you don't have all that that you need for that plan to succeed, it's not going to succeed, right? That's where the culture comes in. You have to have the people with the right mindset, with the right drive and willingness to, to see your vision and, and follow that through. And if you don't, man, <laughs> it doesn't matter, yeah. you know? Um, so once you plan that and you develop it, that it's developed with a purpose. You've realized like, hey, I, I have this vision. I, this is my plan. I, I spent a lot of time developing it because this is the end result, right? This is what we want to achieve. And then comes the last final part, which is implement it with intention. So I have to come to you and, and everybody else and we have to have a conversation. Don't just throw out a memo, right? If, if anybody's ever listened to Jocko, amazing, right? He's got oh, yeah. some great leadership stuff. and. You know, one of the things he talks about is communication, right? It's not that people want to do the wrong thing. It's that they don't understand that they're doing the wrong thing because you gave them a plan, but you never really told them why the plan is the way it is or how you came up with it. Or if we stick to it, this is how we're going to accomplish things. You just throw it out there and you say, hey, read this new SOP because that's what we're doing now. And yeah. then when, when people don't follow it, they get punished. Right. So when you when you plan and you implement things with purpose and, and intentionally, then that communication has to happen and you need to tell them why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, as you're talking, I, it finally kind of clicked. I got, got my train of thought back. You, uh, you were talking earlier about culture and, and fire and patience and all that. And I. I think that is probably one of the big areas me personally as a station officer has to work on to get better at is patience. And especially when we're talking about the culture that I want to try to create and, and bring to my crew, because man, I, I have found out since this journey started that there is no other test in patience bigger than change. It is, it is a true test of patience, a true test of will and perseverance, maybe even if you want to go that intense with it. But, man, it, it is something you have to fight and fight and fight and fight. And just it's just a slow, slow process. And, uh, I, believe, I believe it was Dixon in your webinar said, kind of described it as a culture is a giant battleship with a tiny rudder and i think that is i mean that's freaking spot on right there you you have a giant thing that you're trying to turn but you're turning it with a tiny tiny little piece of apparatus and so that's that's a good way to put it yeah man that that was such a great point he made because i, I think we often forget that right we we often forget it and we find ourselves at every level frustrated of like why are we here you know in the same spot 2 3 years later still fighting the same battle well maybe you got the wrong players right and that's something we need to, to look at is we we're talking about trying to steer that that giant ship you got to be careful who you let on that ship otherwise you'll never gain control of it you know and, yeah. and that's that starts at the uh, the the really like the interviewing process you know, and, and making sure that you ask the questions needed. So, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been on an interview panel, but um, I have. And it's really weird. Usually there's this set defined list of questions and there's, there's really no like attachment to it. You just, you know, okay, Jeremy. Um, and I read this question off a piece of paper and I wait for your response we're so afraid to ask the questions that need to be asked in fear of like we might get in trouble by HR or something. Yeah. But there's, 
there's one question that we can ask that I've never really seen asked in interviews panels that I've been on. And that's one simple thing. Tell me about a childhood memory you have. Now, think about that for a second. I'm about to bring you onto this ship that I'm trying to steer with this small little, you know, rudder in a direction that we need to be in. I need to make sure that you're going to be a team player. And I need to make sure that you can overcome all of those challenges that we have that we're going to face. So when I ask you that question, if you tell me something positive, then I know I have the right person. You just yeah. told me something positive, which means that you're an optimistic person. If you tell me a childhood memory that you have that's negative, immediately right there, red flag. You're a pessimistic person, right? You can't see the positive in anything. And you're probably going to hold that entire ship back. Because attitudes are contagious. I allow you on there and I put you with a crew that maybe is like minded. Next thing you know, you have seven, eight, nine guys all fighting against that forward progress. Um, so when it when it comes to that culture and it comes to those changes, that's really where we need to to put a lot of emphasis in my opinion, because you know, I truly believe that culture, a strong culture will save the most lives. Because when you create a strong culture, you create drive and performance that no policy is ever going to be able to create. And, and that's really what we need to be focused on. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, that's just kind of my takeaway from, from what uh, yeah. Chief Dixon had to say about that. Yeah, uh, you just said something that attitude is contagious. You know, I, I kind of put out an idea a week or so ago, I'd like to hear kind of your thoughts on it, if you differ or whatever, but uh, basically kind of how I see it is, like you said, attitude is contagious. You hear a lot that a bad attitude is more contagious than a good attitude. I, I don't know that that's the truth, honestly. I think it's just how, whatever that attitude is, good or bad, how it's broadcast. If you've got a person that's very outspoken, very opinionated, you know, loves to share what he's thinking, or he or she is thinking, then whatever attitude that they have is going to be way more contagious, I would say, than the attitude of somebody that's quiet and, and kind of withdrawn and, and all that. Do you, do you agree with that? Do you have anything else that, that you would add to that? Well, first... Uh, I do actually agree with that. But first, let's let's take a look at the quiet person. The, the quiet person in the room is, to me, the best person. And it's not because they're quiet. It's because they're observing. Yeah. They're sitting down and they're just watching. It doesn't mean that they're not aware of everything that's going on. They're, they're probably more aware of what's going on around you and them than, than anybody else in that room. You know? Yeah. So... Where I think we tend to fail on that is obviously, you know, there's that whole adage of like, hey, you're a rookie, shut up. Nobody cares what you have to say. Your opinion doesn't matter. And while there is a certain level of truth to that, um, everyone has a, has a part in that mission. So when it comes to attitudes being contagious, think about this for a second. If your culture and your department is, hey, new guy, shut up and go clean some stuff. We don't care about what you have to say um, and you just want them to be seen and not heard. Then what are you creating? You're creating that your opinion doesn't matter, which means you're not valued. And the only reason why you're there is so that maybe uh, the trash doesn't have to be taken out by somebody else or the dishes doesn't have to be washed by you or whatever. And um, we're at a time now in the fire service where it is important to show your value but it's also important to be heard because, you know, everybody's perspective is different. So that quiet guy who's observing, I guarantee you he's got something he wants to say and he's not saying it because of fear of opposition. Right. Yeah. Meanwhile, the three other people that are in that kitchen who are just, you know, complaining about everything under the sun, what attitude is going to win? It's not going to be the guy. It's not going to be the one of the quiet guy. Because he's being yeah. taught what? I, my opinion doesn't matter. It's not valued. And that's yeah. why I say it, it only takes the courage of one person. Stand up and say something. 
And, and you know what? People might not like it. That's fine. But at least it's out there. You know, and people are going to make that decision of what, which attitude they want to follow. You know, you got a room of six people, three of them are negative, And that one person stands up and it's like, hey, don't you guys have anything positive to talk about? I'm tired of hearing this. You know, let's talk about what's going right in our organization. Let's talk about something else. How are your kids doing? Like, whatever. The other people that are in the room that just witnessed that, I guarantee you are sitting there going, it's about time someone said something. And who do you think they're going to follow? They're going to follow that guy who's not afraid to stand up for what's right. Ultimately, the end result will be the negative attitudes will be phased out because no one wants to hear it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I think there's two sides of that equation, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I value the, the quiet person's opinion. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's a lot of good points. I, I think, you know, I've really enjoyed having newer firefighters brought onto my crew because there's, there's so much that we can gain, from, you know, it, and right off the bat, I don't care if, if you have a one week rookie academy or if you have a six month rookie academy, hopefully that person is coming in with some passion, which is always welcomed onto a crew. I don't care how well a a crew is, is going more passion is always a good thing. So hopefully at the very least you're gaining some passion, but probably these people are coming out of the recruit academy with good knowledge that, if you allow them to, they could share it and, and tighten up some techniques of, you know, the, the veterans on the crew or, you know, just teach them some new things that maybe they haven't heard yet. Or there, there's so many good things that, that everybody can contribute. And yeah, to, to shut somebody down because they're new and, you know, it's all a game and I get some of it, but to go the, the extent of like what you're explaining, that's, that's just detrimental to everybody I mean, every single person on the crew. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, and I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, at least down here in Florida, most fire departments have a union, right? Well, what comes with union, union dues? All right. So let me get this straight. You, you want me to join the union. You want to take union dues out of my paycheck, but in that same sentence, you're going to tell me that my views don't matter. Well, they, they matter to you when you need money. They matter to you when you're trying to sit there in front of like city council or, or whoever and argue for what you feel you deserve. That's when you're like, hey, I need you to vote. Hey, come to this meeting. Hey, you know, tell them what you feel. Okay, so if the only time that an individual's opinions are valued is when it, when it benefits someone else, yeah. man, that's terrible. That's terrible because yeah. – you know, one of, one of the things that I, I wanted to touch on when, what you just said with, you know, being able to, to learn from people's passion and, and new guys and, and recruits is, you know, just like attitudes, passion is contagious. It, it really is. But the thing about passion is that's one thing that experience will never be able to teach, right? You can have 15, 20 years on the job and not be passionate. You know, yep. this guy come in and super fired up, super passionate. Dude, that's, that is, that's a recharge. You know, you're having a bad day. You got this passionate guy on, man. What, what better person to latch onto, whether he's a, a, a day on the job or, or not, you know, that's, that's the attitude that, that we should all strive for. Because exactly. when you're, pa- when you're passionate, it means that you care about something. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's really it. And I think we're telling these people like, Hey, just sit in the corner, sit in the corner. And I always looked at it as like, Hey, if I can't hang out with you and I can't talk to you for an entire year and then all of a sudden I'm off probation and now you want to be best friends and go golfing and stuff, I've, <laughs> I've got nothing for you because up until that point, nothing I said or yeah. did matter to you. Right. We're not friends. We're coworkers at that point, you know, yeah. and that's, that's where we need to make that cultural shift of understanding that like, Hey, from, from day one to, to the day you retire, everybody has value and until we can realize that we're, we're going to be missing that mark yeah exactly uh, so much good stuff here and i know we could keep going and going and going but i want to definitely give you a chance to to plug some of the things you're involved with before we go so 
you you mentioned build your culture, which is your uh, you and Pablo's uh, social media platforms, mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook. Do you have a website as well? Build your culture. Uh, we don't right now. Uh, it's okay. Just, everything we do is either on Instagram or Facebook, unfortunately. Okay. So you mentioned that. Well, I mentioned. Well, both of us kind of mentioned the Unlock Your Culture webinar. So. Mm -hmm. Give us uh, the plan on that. You is going to be once a month. Is that kind of how it's going to go? Yeah. So I'll just give you the backstory on that real quick. Uh, yeah. I promise I won't go on a tangent. <laughs> no, go um, ahead. The backstory on that is uh, John Haywick, um, Mark Alone, myself, and, and, and Pablo. It, it just kind of started as a, a round table. You know, like you and I right now, we're having this conversation, but how many times do you go to a class or something like that where, where you attend and it's great information, but you, you don't really have the time to answer, to ask the question you want to ask or have that one-on-one -on -one with the instructor to kind of like yeah. expand upon points. Um, so I came to John a little bit, um, you know, a couple months ago and, and, and Mark and I was like, hey, I have this idea. I have this idea of doing like a round table webinar platform where we have a topic and we may or may not have a guest on whatever, but that's the topic of the evening and we're going to talk about it. And anybody who signs up has a seat at that table. This is for everybody. You know, you, you want to talk about frustrations you have in your agency. Great. Let's do it right here. And it, it was just an idea to create a platform of people that come together once a month and share their views, whether, you know, it's a struggle they're having or whatever. And, um, you know, there's so much stuff you can talk about culture. It's, it's almost endless. And, uh, you know, it's getting hit pretty hard, but let's be honest, you know, most of the times, if you want a podcast, like you, you, you can listen, but you know, um, that only goes so far. If you want to be involved, then you either got to be invited on or something like that. So, uh, yeah. this is, this is a way to say, Hey, it's an open invitation. It's a big table. We got endless seats. Come join us. Yeah. Um, so that's where the unlock your culture, uh, web webcast came in and, um, you know, we'll be, like I said, we'll be doing that once a month, you know, and, and trying to get a, um, a guest on if, if we can, if not, then we're all just going to have a conversation and enjoy it. And yeah. it's all free, you know, there, you just sign up for free. And then at the end of it, the recording is uploaded, uploaded to our YouTube channel. So, Hey, if you, if you can't make it, that's fine too. It's going to be there for you to be able to look at because, um, we got to get away from charging everybody to have access to the things that they need. You know, everyone's financial situation is different. Um, and ain't nobody trying to get rich out here off of this stuff. This is just passion. This is, you know, taking our fire service back and leading it in a direction it needs to go. So um, that, that's kind of the whole reason behind that, that webcast series there. Yeah. Well, I, that honestly, that's, that's where I first, kind of heard of you is, is through, I was, I uh, signed up for the conference, you know, the Unlock Your Culture Conference, and man, the, what was it, the 12, 12 instructors, I think, about an hour and a half a piece. Oh, yeah, that's yep. What it was. Yeah, it was over that like was three awesome. days. Lots of, lots of information. I heard kind of your lecture, I'm sure it was a shorter version of what you have, but really really good stuff uh i talked to really john haywick i was on one of his call-in shows i think it was on uh valentine's day and that was kind of my introduction to podcast so he he was very helpful to kind of get me introduced in this and like i've already talked about you know i've, I've had some conversations with mark i've not met or talked to pablo yet but uh solid solid group of, of guys right there it's it's a i'm i'm excited to to hear and see where where you guys go and just to learn from you with that it's it's, a, it's an impressive lineup and always always good information coming from from you all so that's that's a good deal well thank you we appreciate it so you know it's they said no, none of us are experts you know, oh yeah, we're just we're just sharing we're just sharing our, our yeah. little our little take on things. So, you know, hopefully it helps people. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. So you got that. Well, you, something else that's new is this make do podcast. And yes. if 
if I correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of like a to add on to the the five alarm task force podcast. Is that kind of go ahead and explain a little bit of that? Yeah. So I, I have a hard time saying no to things, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> my wife hates it because I'm just like, yeah, sure, let's go. Um, so my my good friend Nick Peppard um, up up in Holly Navar Fire District is a captain there. Um, he runs the North Florida Fire Expo, and he called one night, and he's like, hey, I have this idea, and I understand that you're busy or whatever, but, um, you know, I just want to run it by you. So Steve Green is the guy who runs Five Alarm Task Force, and the idea was to to get with Steve and, and just talk, you know, he's got the platform and everything, so all, all kind of come together under that name, make the make do suburban firemen's podcast series and that that is to encompass all things suburban firefighter um you know and and 80 percent of of the american fire service is also in that suburban category so the intention behind that is you know i don't know how many guys you have on your crew but you know a lot of people they're going with two guys or or maybe three and and you just don't have enough people you're not yeah. like New York City or Chicago where you're getting a, a vast amount of people immediately. Or I might be able to look at you and say, Jeremy, you're the irons guy, and your only job is to show up and force the door, right? We, we just don't have that luxury in suburban or rural um, areas. So how do we navigate that? What, you know, what tactics are we using? And, and again, we're bringing guests on for that. Um, we have Kurt Isaacson coming on and uh, – Shannon Stone's coming on and, you know, we're handpicking people um, for that, that we feel are truly experts in that field of, um, you know, so we'll talk about, you know, fire tech, we'll talk about search, we'll talk about, you know, all these things that we do and how it relates into the suburban environment. And, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be put out on Five Alarm Task Force, uh, their podcast, it'll be put out on uh, the YouTube channel. Um, for Five Alarm Task Force, and again, that's going to be a monthly series of um, discussing uh, what what it is we have, and we have a Facebook page for that. Well, one of the things that helps us out is anybody who who goes through it, send us some questions, right? When when we have like Chief Isaacson or Chief Stone on, send us some questions through the through the Facebook page of of things that you might want us to to ask them, you know, and again, it's just giving people a platform to, to get involved and, you know, what works for me may not work for you. So if you hear something from, you know, somebody who does, you know, search with a two-man crew all the time, that might be of a benefit to you rather than listening to somebody who has the ability to, to split crews, have a fire attack and a separate search crew. Yeah. So that, that's kind of where, where that kind of came in play. Cool. And one more, one last thing that, of, of the list like i said i'm trying to kind of pinpoint all the things you're associated with it but uh bearers of the oath and and i know we discussed this for a briefly before recording but uh this is something that i was recently reached out by a couple of the the guys that started it and and kind of starting to understand what they're about and, and excited to to be a part of their message and so what I uh, go ahead and just kind of explain a little bit about that. Oh man. So Shane Lee, those guys are awesome. Um, you know, they, <laughs> they started this thing and, and they kind of, I came across it honestly by accident on Facebook one day. I was like, Oh, this, this seems interesting, you know, um, see what this is about. And, you know, I, I forget exactly how it started, but, uh, Shane and Lee, um, they, Shane Bentley and, and Lee Humphreys, um, they, they just started talking. They started reaching out and, and everything. And we started, we found out that we have a lot of the same values, the same um, views on things. And, you know, if you ever get a chance to, to listen to Shane's story about how Bears of the Oak came out, man, that's an incredible story. And that guy has overcome on, some. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, man, you won't be disappointed. He's got a great, great backstory to it. And, and you know, it, it encompasses family and, and all kinds of things. And, you know, that that guy has been through a lot of hurdles and yeah. um, man, I just respect the hell out of that guy. He, he's doing everything he can. And 
Um, so long story short, we started talking with, hey, we should get together, do some training, whatever. And we started exchanging, you know, hats and t-shirts and, and all kinds of things. And, you know, our, our friendship just kind of blossomed. And, uh, you know, that they, they're doing amazing things. They're, they're up in Georgia and, and there's not a day that goes by where you can't go on their Facebook page and, and see a training that they're doing or, or, you know, just the view that they have on the fire service in general. And I would urge everybody to do themselves a favor and, and go and look at what their, what their, uh, statement is you know it's okay. yeah. it's it encompasses literally everything we do everything yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean that's, and that's I, how I, I would describe it too yeah it, it just man you can't get much better than guys who are just so passionate and, and they yeah. i love seeing that stuff you know and it, it, step by step you know we're all working together you know i'm sporting their hat right now and um, yeah you know, you, you got to support those who support you. And especially if they're on the same mission, you know, that's how we're going to win. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really what else to say about this guys other than like, they're great firemen, they're great friends. And, and they just truly have a desire to not settle for mediocre and, yep. and improve the overall fire service, you know? Awesome. I would definitely put some links in the bio or uh, in the heck, whatever you want to call it, the description of this podcast to, <laughs> yeah. to try to steer as many people as I can to them. Cause I, I totally agree with everything you're saying. Like I explained, I'm, I'm fairly new to them, but it, it doesn't take much to figure out pretty quickly what they're about. And, and so I, from what I see and hear, it sounds exactly like what you, what you're explaining. So, Sure. Definitely well, a I just, good, good group of guys. I want to take a minute because I'd be remiss if I yep, don't do go this. Ahead. Um, I know you're you're a pretty humble guy, and, and I respect that. You know, so I'm going to do this for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> what you're doing with Crew First Culture, man, that's that's some great stuff. And you know, I I remember listening to your podcast, the first one, when you were recording it inside of your closet. You know, <laughs> at <laughs> <Yeah>. night. <laughs> And, and just thinking to myself, like, man, here's this guy who who feels so strongly about this mission that he's taken time to lock himself in a closet <laughs> to record this thing. And, uh, you know, I followed you from, from that all the way, and you're just doing great things, man. And, and I love to see it. I love your post. Um, you know, you, you've got great vision. And, you know, it looks like you got amazing buy-in from your crew. And, and that's contagious, man. I, I can tell. You know, you you can tell those people who are just kind of drug along and don't want to be there versus the people that are actually fired up. And, you know, it takes a person like you to get that crew fired up. And, um, you know, when, when I was sitting there listening to you talk about how you had that heart to heart with your crew, man, that that's super commendable because a lot of people don't, you know, so I just wanted to take that opportunity to say thank you for what you're doing um, and, and your vision for the fire service and, and to continue to do that because it, it is definitely needed. I, I can't, can't say how much I appreciate that. And it's, it's, it's pretty humbling to, to hear somebody talk about the first episode, because I will very quickly admit that I'm sure it was very rough. Not that I am a uh, polished podcaster at this point, but I definitely, <laughs> definitely started off rough. So I, I, it, it means, means a lot to me to, to hear you say it. So I thank you for that. Yes, yeah, I do. Any, any I have a I have a very very lucky to have a good crew. You know, I got a solid solid driver that is you know, super passionate and teaches nationally, and you know, three other firefighters that that love just getting out there and, and getting better. And so, yes, I I'm lucky, and and I appreciate you saying that. And, and thank yeah, anytime, brother. For, for support. Oh, absolutely. So. Uh, dogs going crazy here so uh but you know i truly truly appreciate you know everything that, that we talked about in your time and sorry for the dogs oh it's all right uh not a problem i definitely definitely will have you on again if if not by yourself with pablo or whoever else because this is exactly the kind of stuff that i could sit and talk and talk about so i, I 
man, I, I loved it. I hope there's a lot of people out there that get as much out of it that I have personally from it. So thank you very much for that. That's my, time. my pleasure. I, I appreciate you uh, inviting me to come on the show. So everybody out there to find Sean, like I said, you don't have to go far, but he's got his uh, social media platform of build your culture. You can find him on Instagram, Facebook, the uh, unlock your culture webinar. They, like you said, they upload it to YouTube after they get done with that. So I'm excited to be able to, to access it easily like that. That's a great, great idea. Uh, the make, make do suburban firefighter podcast you can find on like you said they they've got a, a facebook page and pretty much any i assume any podcast platform that, that you listen to podcasts on and also the bears of the oath group and like you said you know anybody out there that hasn't heard of them please go out look look them up Look, look them up, read, read what they're really about, and, and great, great group of, of firefighters that, that want to do good things. They have uh, Facebook and Instagram pages as well. So is there, is there any other ways that, that you want to put out there for people to get a hold of you, or is that kind of your main avenues? Yeah, no, I, I tell everybody, um, you know, they can, feel free to email anytime, you know. Um, I try not to give out my phone number too much just because my phone always goes off. And <laughs> like I said, I have a hard time saying no. So I'll be out with the family and next thing I know I'm on the phone and you know, this, I got, I got to cut back on that one. So, um, but my, my email address is, is Duffy five, five, eight at gmail.com. Or you can email the build your culture, um, which is build your own culture at gmail.com. Um, either one of those I, I, I have access to 24 seven. So um, I will get back with you. And then if, if a conversation needs to pl take place and you absolutely 100% need to talk to me, then, you know, I'll exchange my phone number then. But uh, yeah, it got, it got a little crazy. My phone was just always going off all sure. time doing night stuff. And sure. you know, my poor, my poor wife was like, uh, yeah, uh, that, that's got to change. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, but, uh, other than that, man, you know, send me a Facebook message, whatever. I, I'm always, you know, here to, to talk about whatever, even if it's just to say, Hey, what's up thinking about you, that kind of stuff. That's cool too. Cool. All right, man. Enjoyed it very much. Look forward to the next time. Look forward to, to everything else you got coming out and, and just, excited to see where it goes so until next time I've, i appreciate you and I look forward to it yeah, absolutely brother i appreciate it thank you I, I look forward to everything you got coming out as well before i leave i want to say thanks to the sponsor of the podcast is woods For forcible entry door kits if you haven't heard of them go ahead and check them out instagram facebook they've got some great stuff to look at and help you out in your training needs so thank you all out there Look forward to next time and till then take care of each other and stay safe. Thank you.